everyone, my name is Elaine, and today I'm going to be both summarizing and reviewing the 14th novel in Terry Pratchett's Discworld series, Lords and Ladies. Starting with the summary. A girl named Esmeralda speaks to a woman standing in a ring of stones. Esmeralda realizes the woman can't leave the circle. She vows to overcome the woman's doubts and become the best witch that has ever lived. The woman offers to show Esmeralda how to be a great witch if she comes into the circle. Esmeralda hesitates. That was a long time ago. In the present, three riders look down upon the ring of eight stones. They talk about how they can return soon and hunt, how they will not be defeated, how the queen will handle the witches. Three witches fly into Langer. They're back from their trip to Genua, which lasted eight months. Margaret goes to see King Varens. He informs her that he set the date of their marriage for Midsummer Day and has made several other arrangements for their wedding, all without asking her. Varens talks about the ways he intends on improving the kingdom and shows Margaret to the old rose garden, which is filled with beans. Suddenly, the bean plant's stems bend and break, forming a circle. The bees surrounding the plants flee. The Lanker coven meets to discuss the crop circles they've seen popping up over Lanker. Granny asserts that the circles need to be stopped. Margaret reveals that she's going to be wed and become queen in two weeks' time. Margaret gets into a fight with Granny and quits being a witch in favor of being a queen. She's tired of being talked over and never told anything, etc. Margaret runs off. Granny thinks it's better this way. Granny and Nanny decide to go up to the dancers first thing the following day. On her way to the palace, Margaret throws a sack filled with her witch's accoutrement into the Lanker Gorge. Nanny and Granny visit the dancers, the Ring of Stones, to discover that someone has been dancing and someone who looks like a hunter has been killed. The Archchancellor of Unseen University can sense something happening. He notices something that hadn't been there the day before. Nanny recognizes the deceased as William Scrope. He appears to have been stabbed. Granny wants to get to the bottom of it to figure out who danced around the stones. The wizards receive Margaret and Varence's wedding invitation. The Archchancellor elects to attend with the Bursar, the Librarian, and Ponder Stibbins. They also notice a lot of crop circles cropping up around the university. Margaret tries to adjust to life in the palace, especially the new clothes she's expected to wear. Granny tries to figure out what's happening by visiting her beehives. She finds the bees spilling out of them, acting extremely worried. Nanny does her own investigative work. She speaks to her son, Jason Ogg, the master blacksmith and farrier, about what has been going on while she was away. Jason informs her that a group of girls goes up into the mountains and dances every full moon. The group includes the fledgling witches Diamanda and Perdita. Nanny tells Jason that the girls have been dancing around the stones. Nanny tells Jason that the lords and ladies live on the other side of the dancers, and that they can return if they're not careful. Nanny goes to Granny's cottage. She's out borrowing. When Granny returns from borrowing a bat, the witches compare notes. They know of the dancers dancing around the stones, of another mind moving around. Granny knows it belongs to an elf. Granny informs Nanny that the elves are trying to find a way in and that something has already come through, an animal which killed Scrope and is still lurking. Granny begins looking for it. The unicorn watches them go. Granny and Diamanda challenge one another. It will take place at noon. Granny returns to her cottage and finds a unicorn on her lawn. She frightens it away with an iron poker and asks that it deliver a message to its mistress. She is to stay away. They know all about iron and Lanker. Granny and Diamanda meet in Lanker's main square for their duel. Margaret hears about the duel and rushes from the castle to watch. Nanny informs her that it's a staring contest and Granny is bound to lose. Margaret wants to help Granny. Granny wins the duel by returning a screaming child who had stepped into the magic circle to his grandmother. The Archchancellor and company set out for the royal wedding by coach. Cassinunda tries to rob the wizards. He fails and is allowed to travel with them. Granny informs Nanny that she chose to become a witch and has no regrets. Diamanda heads toward the dancers, humiliated by her loss. She is determined to show the older witches the meaning of witchcraft and what it can become. Granny is waiting for Diamanda at the dancers. She knows the girl was given power by the elven queen. When Diamanda goes through the stones, Granny follows. A group of elven riders and their queen are waiting for them on the other side. The queen orders her men to kill Granny and Diamanda. Granny helps Diamanda escape, but the girl is shot and poisoned by an arrow. Nanny captures the elf that comes through the dancers after them. Granny intends to throw the elf in the dungeons and use his magic to cure the unconscious Diamanda. Diamanda is brought to Margaret for help. Granny wants to show Varence something downstairs. Granny shows Varence the elf she locked in his dungeon and tells him not to tell anyone about it. Granny tells him that elves have a glamour that shrouds their true nature, have no empathy, and it's better if everyone forgets about them because they come when they're called. Granny begins behaving strangely. Granny and Nanny leave the castle. Diamanda is left in Margaret's care. Granny knows it isn't over yet. The queen is still looking for a way in. Granny can feel her and knows she can force her mind past the stones. The Langer Morris men, which includes Jason Ogg, decide to practice their play for the royal wedding by the dancers so they can have some privacy. Jason feels like something is wrong. It smells like snow. The men fall asleep around the dancers. The wizards and Cassinunda arrive in Langer. Jason awakens beside the dancers. His head full of whispers. He gets the others up. The men go their separate ways. After borrowing the mind of a hare, Granny realizes that they had broken in somewhere, and she was planning something, something soon. That's on page 200. 
Granny knows that she'll have to face the queen eventually and that she will not be victorious. Margaret checks on Diamanda and removes the wrapped bars of iron from around her body, which had been meant to keep the elves away. Margaret snoops in Varence's room and finds a folded piece of paper. She unfolds it. The pre-wedding party begins. Margaret is nowhere to be found. The Archchancellor uses a spell to transport both himself and Granny, an old love interest, away from the party to talk about what might have been. The unicorn leaps into their path. Maggret is angry and has locked herself in her room. After sending Varence and his attendants away, Nanny tries to coax Maggret out and fails. Casananda takes Nanny out for a romantic candlelit dinner. Granny disappears. The unicorn charges Ricoli. Ricoli jumps into the Lanker. The play begins. It begins to snow over the hill between the little stones. Maggret considers leaving Lanker. She's still upset about the letter she found. Granny and Ricoli meet on a weir. Granny intends to go where she doesn't want her to go. Diamanda opens her eyes. There's a pearly sheen to them. Diamanda slips out of bed and uses the edge of her blanket to open the door to escape her sick room. After going to investigate a strange sound that was coming from within the castle, Sean discovers that the door to the elf's cell is ajar. He flees from it after speaking briefly with Diamanda. Margaret hears singing. She leaves her room and runs into Sean. Sean explains that there was an elf in the dungeon who put Diamanda under its spell. Diamanda is now doing its bidding and the elves are out there. Sean leaves the castle to get help. Maggot does her best to evade the invading elves. Granny and the Arch Chancellor keep going in circles. Granny realizes they've been mazed. The pair realize that there's a group of elves in the tree above them. Granny sends Ridcully away. He vanishes while she remains to face the elves. Maggot unwittingly darts into the armory and puts on iron armor. The elves use Sean as bait to get Maggot out of the armory. Maggot rescues the injured Sean from the elves, killing all but one of them with the help of Grebo and Iron. Sean informs Maggot that the elves stabbed Diamanda. The surviving elf won't tell the humans where everyone has gone and claims that Maggot won't get the king back because she has him. Maggot and Sean lock the elf up and then head to the kitchen to check on Diamanda and tend to Sean's wounds. Maggot tends to both Sean and Diamanda's wounds, then Maggot goes off to fight. Maggot learns that the elves attacked during the play from Weaver, one of the Morris men. Nanny and Casanunda head to Nanny's cottage to retrieve her broomstick after the elves ruin their date. After retrieving her broomstick, the pair fly to the forge and retrieve a crowbar and another item. After facing a group of elves in an aerial battle, Nanny and Casanunda escape and fly to the Long Man, where there is an entrance to the Lanker Caves, which leads to the elvish world. Nanny wants to use the entrance to locate the elves. Casanunda uses a crowbar to lift a stone, exposing the entrance. The pair begin to make their way through the caves underneath. They run into a horned king. Nanny threatens him with a horseshoe, the promise that she'll have the long man dug up and him nailed if he doesn't come and put things in balance. The king says he'll make a decision about what he wants to do as Nanny and Casanunda go on their way. Nanny informs Casanunda that the Horn King is the Elvish Queen's husband and would want to stop her because he can't stand her. Maggret runs into some elves and is rescued by the librarian and Ponder, but mainly the librarian. Ponder fills her in on the elves' attack, how they had some people push the stones down, and how the other witches weren't at the entertainment. Maggret continues on her way. Ponder and the librarian drag a loopy burser after her. Ridcully materializes in Lanker Castle and finds several of Lanker citizens have sought shelter there. The Archchancellor speaks to Sean and discovers that Lanker is under attack by elves. The bride has gone to fight them. They've got Granny, and the only witch remaining is Nanny. Nanny and Casanunda arrive. She wants Bowman up on the roof and announces that there is a glow over the dancers. Elves all over the place. Nanny helps Sean organize an army. Margaret finds the hill where the dancers had been aglow and something wrong with the landscape. What was a hill was also, at the same time, a vast snowbound panorama. Langer and the land of the elves were trying to occupy the same space. The intrusive country wasn't having it all its own way. Langer was fighting back. That's on page 324. Margaret notices a group of elves breaking camp on the cusp of the warring landscapes. Granny is a captive in the queen's tent. Granny explains that the queen is having a hard time taking over because the land belongs to humans now. The queen hopes to change that by marrying Varence, whom she has captured. The queen believes the union will force the land to accept her. The queen notices Margaret's approach. She plans to humiliate her and mocks Granny for having no friends and no one to care for her when she dies. The queen intends to ride to the castle with Granny. Margaret and Sean's army encounter the queen and her elves. There's a brief skirmish before the queen and her elves unleash their glamour and the fighting stops. Granny resists the queen's might and holds her elves so they can't fire their weapons. The queen unleashes her power. It was felt by every living creature for a mile around. Small things died. Birds spiraled out of the sky. Elves and humans alike dropped to the ground, clutching their heads. And in Granny Weatherwax's garden, the bees rose out of their hives. That's on page 339. Others join them, creating a swarm that is headed toward the dancers. Granny releases the queen's hold on Margaret. Margaret fights the queen and begins to get the better of her. There is silence. The thought of the elvish king comes to collect the fallen queen. Everyone gets to their feet. The elves are gone. Ridcully announces that Granny is dead. A group of bees circle the sky above her. Ponder and the librarian put the stones back. Margaret and Nanny go through the mysterious box in Granny's cottage. Margaret reveals what was in the letter she found in Varence's room. Granny had arranged her marriage. 
Nanny had had no idea. Nanny finds a letter in Granny's mysterious box. It states that Granny is not dead yet. They rush out of the cottage. They don't have much time. Margaret and Nanny arrive at the castle. Nanny breaks a window, allowing the swarm in. Granny returns from borrowing the swarm of bees. Granny sets the wedding back on track. After some preparations are made, Varence and Margaret are wed. Granny captures the unicorn with a noose made of a single strand of her hair. Granny leads the unicorn to the forge and has Jason put silver shoes on it, making it more docile and impossible for the queen to get back. Granny sets the unicorn free. Granny suspects Diamanda will be up and about soon. The story ends with a peaceful summer night, the silence of the elves emanating from the empty hillside. And that's the end of the novel. Now, on to my book review. I felt as though this novel's pace could have used some work. It was pretty slow, much slower than most if not all of the Discworld novels that came before it. Then it ended swiftly and kind of abruptly. Although it had a few good moments, this novel was nowhere near as humorous as the novels that came before it. This book also contributed to my dislike of Margaret Garlic. I wouldn't say that I hate her, but with each novel I appreciate her less and less. In Lords and Ladies, she spends most of the novel being a whiny little shike. She doesn't like her new queenly dresses, she's upset by a letter which arranged the marriage she wanted all along, she finds being queen to be terribly boring, there's a lot of sewing and tapestry work, and she finds the lack of her inclusion in her own wedding plans to be frustrating. Now, I understand the last one, if I'm being completely honest, a woman should have a say in her own wedding, but geez, this woman complains a lot, which makes it very hard to like her. She improves at the end of the novel when she takes a stand against the elves, but the shift from her usually polite, meek, vegetarian, peace-loving character to a determined, elf-killing, badass biatch is a bit jarring. Even if she thinks she's drawing power from the armor she puts on, the armor that supposedly belongs to the deceased warrior queen, Inky, the shift is just too abrupt. It doesn't fit with my picture of Margaret. Nor do I think she'll take it well once she's realized what she has done, even though she did it for the good of the kingdom and to save her fiancé. I also felt as though some of the characters were dropped and then abruptly picked up again when Pratchett found the time or they were convenient for the plot. Prime examples would be the Archchancellor and Casananda. I would have liked to see their roles as more consistent throughout the story, as opposed to two people who came and disappeared before suddenly reappearing. I honestly have no idea what Casananda was doing after he helped Nanny lift the stone leading into the Lanker Caves so she could speak with the Elvish King and the army was formed. We didn't see him again until the end of the novel when the unicorn is getting its chews. So overall, I gave this book a 3.2 out of 5 star rating. Definitely wasn't the best book in the series because of issues like pacing and character dropping and Margaret being whiny, but it was a good read. It had its moments and it was part of the Discworld, so what's not to love? And there you have it, my summary and review for Terry Pratchett's Lords and Ladies. If you like what you saw here today, please give me a thumbs up, smash that like button until it's blue, leave a comment down below, let me know what you thought of this book, some of the other books you might have read in the Discworld series, what your favorite is. I always like to know what you guys think. Subscribe, ring that bell so you'll know what's up, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Bye guys!